So welcome back YouTube friends to the journal making uh, series. The covers then are drying overnight or longer. Uh, the more bone dry they are, the better the equilibrium between the uh, wet side of the glue and the dry side of the card, the more they'll even themselves out. So I just make the cover and then leave it to one side while I then assemble the pages. The next thing I'm going to do then is pages. That's what this part's going to be about. Now, just to mention, though, before I go on, when I'm making a journal like this one, I've got everything out on the table. It's all out here. And so my thinking is make more than one. You know, so, yeah, make a few. Uh, it's just as easy, I find, if you've got the oven on and the recipe out, you might as well make two cakes. <laughs> so I'm actually making four books and I'm going to collect together the pages now for four books. It's just as easy to do that. Now I've got all the little bits and pieces that I cut off from the uh, end papers that I did. All these little uh, bits and pieces here are all in a pile. They'll come in handy for something or other. So now we're going to talk about the sections in the book. Now, we'll bring back the New Zealand Journal. Let's turn that off. So if we look here then, you can see that I have sections of papers here. Norma, come on. I'm going to put her on my knee. Come on, sit on my knee. Or sit on this chair. There, look, sit on that chair. Sit on that chair for me. Not my knee. So what we're going to do next then is assemble the pages. So if we just look at one section like that, Actually, this is going to be easier to do in a finished empty book. Here's one of the books. Uh, I have a couple of these that are made and uh, were for sale in the shop and now aren't, but will be again probably. OK, then. So there's the cover that is drying now. And then with the sections then that we are talking about now. I think three sections is more than enough. It depends how many pages you want. But that is one section there. And then there's a second section there and a third. So what we need to do then is collect together enough pages to put into our book. You can do as many as you want to, but I find that 10 sheets of paper in each section gives me a lovely big book with loads and loads of pockets and flaps and uh, all sorts of um, space to write, stick pictures in, do whatever. So we end up then with 30 folded pages, which is 60 pages, isn't it? So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to collect together the pages that we need to put in the book. Now I have on the table here, I have all sorts of papers just bring some of them over. I've got a lot of paper. <laughs> I've only got a tiny bit of it out here. And when I'm making these books, I like to include not just plain paper here, but I like to have pockets in there. Some plain papers there. Depends what you want. That's just a little bit of decorative stuff I stuck on that makes it look the same as the as the outside of the book. And then there's some squared paper there, which is nice to have. Uh, and then here's some pockets. So the little pockets there uh, and here. Handy for, in this book you'll see, <laughs> uh, in the finished book here, that the pockets were just really useful for just popping things in as I was going around on my holiday. Some of the pages have got open flaps like so. 
Uh, some of them are, um, there's another one with a pocket in. So I make these pages now. I do quite a lot of sewing on the sewing machine when I'm doing this. So that, um, here we go, I'll just show you a couple that I've made just now. So here then is just an ordinary folded piece of A4, thickish paper, almost card you would say. But onto the back of it what I've done is I've sewn one of these um, plastic wallet pouches. I've sewn it on. I'm going to do one of those with you in a minute, so I'll show you how I do that. Because I'm making four books, I'm collecting together four lots of everything. Now in these sections of 10 by 3 sections, you don't want every single page to be a pocket or a pouch or a flap or whatever. You want some just straightforward pages so that you can journal on them or stick on them or draw on them. And a few pockets. So I'd say it's up to you. But when I'm making these journals uh, for sale or for uh, myself or whatever, in each of the sections of 10 folded pages, there are maybe two that have got something fun going on. So here's one that I made. This is made out of a map of Manhattan. And there's a folded pocket here, which has got a little tiny bit of stitching at the side. And so I'll show you how I made that one. It's quite simple. I'll just get it get a one here. A while ago I bought this pad of uh, map pages which are in fact placemats, disposable placemats for a cafe and uh, there was New York, London, Paris and Tokyo. And so the way that I would make a page like that that was um, uh, a pocket page like this one Okay, let me make some space and I can show you how I do that. Put everything to one side. <laughs> okay, here's my map then. And it's got a little symbol in the corner which has got a knife and fork on it and I don't actually want that. I want it just to look like a map. So I'm going to select the bit that I want and fold it in Actually, I'll choose, I'll choose this one, so that one's a bit marked. Okay, so I'm going to, this is Manhattan, okay? And I'm going to fold up the bottom um, two inches, like so. So that when I finished making this, that will be a little pouch that you can put things inside. And then I'm going to fold this. Oh, here's my template. This is the biggest any page can be and fit into the spine of the book. So I'm going to fold the, um, the paper like so. So I'm going to fold it like that, and that is too big, so now I can cut that down. So I'll fold those there, I've got the, the folded over bit there, I'll put my template page on here, pop that down there like that, and I'm going to have the map page then exactly the, the size that I want the paper to be. I could have it smaller if I wanted to, but I definitely wouldn't have it any bigger. So steel ruler on, nice sharp scalpel. And I'm not going to throw these bits out. These little bits here, I'm going to put on a pile over here. They might put in an appearance at some point in the future. <laughs> okay then, so let's just sw swizz the top of this off here. I'll just cut the top of this off here. template safe. So what I've then got then is this piece of paper here folded like so and now I'm going to show you how I sew that. So over to the sewing machine then and just with an ordinary sewing stitch you can do a zigzag stitch or a decorative stitch if you like but I'm just going to sew and then 
you don't have to go back again but I just like to make the little tails come out at the bottom because I don't actually cut those off I like those and the person who has the book in the future they can cut them off if they like but I leave them floating free because I like the thing to look a bit tatty so in the, and, and I don't actually mind where that tatty is it can be anywhere so it's frilly out of the side of the, of the thing there so now then that is a page that will go into our book on the inside it'll just be nice and plain and on the outside it'll have this pocket now if I folded that the other way we'll do one I'll fold one the other way there we go I'll just put that there so this one is a map of Tokyo so we'll do the same thing but this time I'll fold the page up this way like so, fold it in half, higher, higher prudence, I'm going to put my template on there now and cut that, watch your pause prudence, this is sharp. Be careful always when you've got a template not to cut the template with your modelling knife because it will just get smaller and smaller and smaller and you don't want that. You want the template to stay the same size. Okay, so this one then. Let's just cut that again. Keep my scraps because I might need those for something else. Put my template the right size. Now if I wanted to I could make this page a bit smaller but definitely no bigger. Unless you don't mind the pages sticking out all over the place. That's okay as well. I like my pages to be a bit flush with the book. So this time then, the map is on the inside and this is, where do you say, Tokyo. And the pocket then on this side is a, a little green pocket. We'll just come over to the sewing machine and we'll stitch those again. Use coloured thread if you like. Cut them off if you want to, whatever you want to do, just cut them a bit shorter if you like. But now we've got a pouch that is going to be a pouch on that side and this part of the page will appear somewhere else in the collection of pages. I'll show you that when we start collating the pages. So, here Prue, get down, get onto that chair, good girl. So there's another page then and what I want to do now then is is collect together 10 groups of pa of folded pages times 3 30 and then I've got four books so I'm going to just carry on and make a big old pile of those so this one's just got me out the corner of my eye this is a little piece of spotty paper with white on the other side it's nice this is um scrapbooking paper that I bought in a big pad and it's nice and spotty and green and um, this will go nicely in a book I'm sure and this is too small to fold this in half it would be too small so what I'm going to do with this one then I'll get the template again And I'll get it the exact size so that one sheet is the right size. And then I'm going to actually I just squeeze it over a tiny little bit. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is put my ruler in along there and fold that up. Can you see? I'm going to fold that up like that. So that now when I fold that. I'm going to have one page that's the, the right size. I'm going to have another page that's short. Now they're both a little bit too tall, so I'll just cut those off along the side of my template. I don't mind if they're 
just out by a whisker. It doesn't actually matter to me. So that now is a page that's going to go into one of the books. And it'll be a short page and an ordinary size page. So we'll put that on the pile. What we're going to do then is start collecting together piles of paper. Um, so I want to show you another bit of paper that I've got here. Now, years ago, uh, I had a friend who was a solicitor. Well, he still is probably. Um, and his solicitor's firm was stopping using this legal paper. This is the kind of paper that leases and wills and so on were written on. It was, you know, properly, beautifully handwritten and sealed with sealing wax and all that malarkey. And this paper then, uh, in these little books, they they were stopping using it in the practice that where he worked. So he gave me a big pile of it. I'm still using it years later. So with my template then, I love it because it's got these beautiful lines, look all over the place. So what I'm going to do with the template, I'm going to cut along exactly the right height, like that. Let's get my knife. Oh. So I'm going to cut this here like so. And there's another very big usable bit there that we'll use later. But the genius about this now is that this legal paper is bigger than my template. So what I'm going to do is, um, actually there's, a, there's several in a little booklet here. So I'm just going to take one lot out using my template as my guide again. And I'm just going to fold the top piece like so and the other one the other way so that when that goes into the book it'll be a flap that opens out okay let's do that there. There we go. And so that one, it doesn't matter which way you fold it, but that one now, when we open up the book, there'll be a flap like that that we can open and write more on or stick on what, or whatever. But what I might do with this side, I'll leave one of them like that. But with this side, what I might do, yes I will, I'm going to cut this down halfway yeah i just make this up as i go along i'm just going to cut this off like that so that now then one side of the page has got a flap on it but this side has got a little flap so what i'll do with that now now that i've got the sewing machine here I'll take that smaller piece there and I'll sew that down with the machine. So that then this page, when it's in the book, will have a little pouch like that that you can slide things in. And on the other side, it'll have an opening piece there. Now, when we've got all of these pages together, and some of them will just be ordinary plain paper. Oh, that one's a spotty one. What we then do with them, once we've collected together the right number of pages, and I'm going to say to you, put some ordinary ones in. So here, for instance, I've got some lined paper here. And I'm just going to get four of those and fold them in half. Oh, this is nice lined paper, this. It's lined on one side and plain on the other, which is lovely. Now, where's my template? If we look at my template, you can just about see that this new page is smaller a little bit. doesn't matter. It'll fit in. So there's four of those now. 
I'm going to take those apart like that because they'll appear in different parts of the book. So when I'm making multiple books, at the moment I'm making four, what I would do is I would make four of these. I'm going to show you now how to make this one. So I'll do this one next. And so I need a piece of folded over, ordinary folded over paper. Put my template there. And one of these plastic pockets. Now, when you're sewing paper on the sewing machine, it doesn't give like fabric. And so it can misbehave. <laughs> and so I have a wee trick. Where's it gone? There it is. So you can't use pins. So instead of pins, I use glue. And I use a little bit of this stick glue. Now this is going to, I'll show you what this is going to be in the book. In the back of all of my books, I put um, a plastic page like this so that you can put all sorts of bits and pieces in there. You can pop them in um, as you're traveling around or as, you've, as you're working on your book. You know, it's a gardening book. You could put a couple of seed packets in or something. And every book has got one of these pages at the back. So I'm going to make one of those with you now. Okay, so if, if we were to try to, to sew this onto this um, paper, it will definitely slip and we can't pin it uh, well, I guess we could pin it, but this is how I pin it. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to put this. It's much, much bigger than we need. But how I do this is, I get my folded paper like this, and I put a little, a little run. I run a little bit of glue here down this side here. That glue will dry and won't cause a problem later. And then here's, uh, let's put something underneath it so that you can see. Let's just put this underneath it so you can see better what I'm doing, hopefully. Or maybe you can, maybe you can't. This is the bottom edge, this is the side. You've got to be careful that you've got the opening at the top and you're not sticking it the wrong way round. So there's my, um, there we go. There's my stuck edge there. And I'm just going to, no, 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 I want it that way round. Yes, I nearly did it wrong. I want the stuck edge, excuse me, Norma, to be, I'll show you, I'll just stick it on. There we go. So the stuck edge then, that piece of paper didn't help us at all, did it? So these are the bits I'm going to cut off. And this bit is just stuck here as if it was pins. Okay. And now I'm going to open that page up. It's kind of stuck on, just holding it in place for me. And then I'm just going to run a line of stitching. And it doesn't move. Normally, when you would sew something like that, it would move all over the place. But if that little bit of glue stick on there, just holds it in place. So now then, once we've done that, and we've got all this excess plastic that we no longer need. So I'm going to take my knife and ruler and cut that off. Because it just be double careful that you're not cutting off the folds and that, so that the thing will work as a pouch. And I can cut this right against the fold, being careful not to cut the fold, obviously. Keep these little bits because they might make pockets somewhere else. In fact, keep pretty much everything. And so now what you've got is uh, a folded page, which will be useful in your book. And then a pocket that is just flapping free at the back there, which will be the last page in your book. So I shall stack that together there. Okay then, so 
there's lots and lots of different papers we can make. Here's another um, lovely thing that I like to use. Years and years ago, I got this ledger. In fact, it's down here. I'll pick it up. Years ago, I was very lucky enough to get this, which is the obstetric register for the hospital I used to work in. And it was a massive, great, big old tome full of uh, pages and pages of um, charts that they no longer use because everything was uh, obviously became pretty digitalised. And so I asked if I could have it when they were throwing it away. And I've been using it for years ever since. So now what I need to do is I need to find... Let's go down here again. I need to find the join where... Oh, that's come out beautifully. Where the pages are bound into this book and just pull them out. So I've got that there now. Fantastic book. And this then... Let's make a page or two out of this book. It's lovely, lovely, lovely ledger paper. So I'll just take one of these printed pages. It's already got the fold in it. It's way bigger than we need it to be. So I'll get my template again, which I've mislaid. There it is. Actually, it's a good idea to make your template in a different color so you can find it easily. Now, when I'm using this then, I will look to see which part of it I want to use. And I like the top because they've got these lovely, lovely numbers uh, printed on the inside. Now, obviously, that's too big. So I'm going to cut. I'll make that cut there so that it's the right size. You could use a guillotine for this if you've got a slidey guillotine. Didn't you know something? I have. It's over there. I should get it out, shouldn't I? I maybe will for some of these. So I'm going to cut this off then, like so. Let's get that cut just right. And this bit here is really useful because I can actually make some smaller pages with that. So we'll keep that on one side. So now what I've got here is something that's way, way, way bigger than I need. Now, one of the things I can do, and I will on this one here, I can fold this in half, like so. And I'm going to cut that along the fold so that what I'm going to make here with this bit that I've cut out here, get my template again, the right height for my template but it's just a little tiny bit too big so I'm just going to trim that down to the size I need and that will be just like one ordinary page in my book. I could have made flaps with that and I could have done pull outs or pockets and I might with some of the others but that is now another page in the book which would be a fun page when someone gets to it to use so we'll put that down on the pile there and I can make another one out of here by just getting the template. You've got the idea of this now. You're going to be collecting together all sorts of papers. Now, if you want, if, if you want to use collage papers and um, prints that you've made or anything at all like that, of course you must. Um, anything, absolutely anything. There's no holds barred with these. For me, I like my books to have a lot of space in them so that I can do a lot of writing. I mean, you saw that with the New Zealand Journal, uh, that I um, I just like to write all the time when I'm on holiday. So there we go. There's another page that's out of the ledger book. So let's look at the little pieces then. I've cut this little piece off now. And template, it's much, much shorter than... Uh, the template is but that's okay because what I'm going to do with this one then is again fold it in half cut
cut it to the size of the template and then in the book then there'll be some shorter pages which are kind of fun i've got quite a few of those in the new zealand journal so those are now smaller pages that will go on my pile. So let's look in the journal and see some of those smaller pages. So to start with, the front page here isn't the, si the same size as the book. Neither is the next one. There's a one uh, that's coming a bit closer. There's one with a little pocket that's got my some pictures inside there. In fact, it's got all sorts of pictures inside there. A whole number of things, tickets and all sorts. Um, there's a, another little page that's got a little... Oh, this is... I'll show you this one. This one is um, an envelope. It's just an ordinary envelope with a window in it and a picture of a, a mosaic eye <laughs> inside there. This page here, I found a postcard uh, that I liked of the dolphins and stuck that in there and wrote on the back of that. And here then is another short page that's got a little pouch on it uh, that I fitted some uh, small things inside. I took with me a little pack of crayons and washi tape so that I could stick in pictures whenever I wanted to. This is another full size page but with a little flap here uh, that I could stick pictures on. This was my birthday. Again a small page. And this small page has got a flap that you can stick things inside. A couple of things inside there. That's the tag from my um, from my luggage. <laughs> a small small um, a small page there with a pull out there. Some more full size pages. Another small page. I'm going to tell you about this page because this page. Uh, is one of the most special pages in my book and there I was in New Zealand a whole world away from um, home and my family and my mum and dad my mum was still alive then of course because this was six years ago and excuse me Norma I'm talking to my YouTube friends and you're in the way so any time I got decent broadband which wasn't that often I would FaceTime them it would be the first thing in the... No, it would be last thing at night for me and first thing in the morning for them. So I always had my pyjamas on because I was going to bed and they always had their pyjamas on because they were just getting up. And I would always make my mum laugh and then do a screenshot. And she's very easy. she was very easy to make laugh. So that was a lovely, lovely page of FaceTimes and screenshots. And then... And then here is another of the solicitor pages. Can I get you to move your ear, darling? And then this is a, a page that's got a, a, that flaps open that I painted a little map on here so that I could record where it was I'd been and what I'd seen there on the map. And that was a little fold-out page like so. Another pocket. So you can see, can't you, the kind of um, pages that I made for this journal where I didn't plan it ahead. They were very unique. I made all these different pages uh, and then collated them all and sewed them into the book. So the next, this middle section then of making the journal is all about collecting together your pages. So I'm going to encourage you then to look at papers a bit differently. Um, you can use brown paper, you can use um, ledger paper, paper from old exercise books. If you want to, you can just use the same kind of um, paper throughout and just make this book straightforward, clean pages all the way through. But if you want to add some interest in, you can. So I'm going to do that now with all four of the books that I've made and make 30 pages for each one. And then at the end, I'll show you what they all look like. Then our next task then will be to collate them all together and I'll show you how to do that and then we'll bind them and that will be part three. Right, get on and collect all your pages together and I'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Now I've sped this up, this next bit. Uh, I know you all said you didn't mind long videos but it was far, far too long. So what I want to show you here then is that I've collected together the 30 pages that I've decided I need for the butterfly book. 
and they're all the different ones that we looked at with the pockets and the fold outs and I'm making three piles now and making sure that the distribution uh, is exactly how I want it to be stripy paper short pages colored pages ledger paper if you've decided you're going to do your book all plain papers you won't need to do this just collect together uh, the, the groups of pages now there's group number one and I want the butterflies pouch to be at the front now I'm going to put all of these 10 sets of pages inside one another just turn that round because I wanted the spots the other way for some reason short page down there but the important thing I'm doing here is I'm going to end the last page in the middle is going to be a full size page and that'll be important for when we do the stitching so now pages and pages coming together um, there we go a full size page in the middle helpful now that's the one with the pouch at the back. If you want your pouch somewhere in the middle of the book, that's okay. If you don't want a pouch, that's okay. But I'm now putting all of these pages together in the order that I want them, pretty much. Full size page in the middle. And that's all my 30 pages. And now they sit beautifully in the, in the covers. And I'm just gonna check through them to see if it is exactly how I want it. And if there's something here that doesn't work for me, then I'll take it out oh, like that and have a rethink and put it in somewhere else. This is where you can spend quite a bit of time um, collating your pages before they're even sewn in. So that's what I'm gonna invite you to do now. Okay. That's that. So I'll see you next time, guys. I'm sorry about the speeded up bit, but it was a long video.